Hey guys, it's Miss Carlson. Today we're going to talk over chapter 10 about cell growth and division. And make sure you have a notebook sheet of paper or a Cornell note template to write good notes. Remember to take your large note taking section uh, of your notes first and then when you're all done go back and form good questions towards those notes to be used as review later. So let's jump into section one which talks about growth, division, and reproduction. The whole reason why a cell has to divide is because there are limits to the size a cell can get. The larger the size of the cell, the more demands are placed in the cell, and therefore the less efficient a cell is able to be in order to maintain its homeostatic processes. The big issues, though, are information overload, which leads to a DNA deficiency. And we know that DNA provides all of the information, the blueprint, to make a cell function like it should and make all of its parts know what they need to do. So if the brain is not working properly, then the rest of the cell isn't going to work properly. The other problem is material exchange. It's very difficult to get uh, things moved across a larger cell, and it's also untimely. The reason for this is, is that the volume of a cell is going to increase greater than its surface area does. And that is shown here with these cube-shaped cells. And if you remember, to get surface area, you take your length times width times the six sides of a cube. To get your volume, you take your length times width and height. And that's these numbers that we're comparing this ratio of surface area to volume here. In this small cube, we have a six to one ratio. If we were to double that size, we would end up with a three to one ratio, which is a huge um, drop in comparison with that volume definitely gaining on surface area at that point, and even more so when you triple the size, and then you get this two to one ratio of surface area to volume. Now, if you can't kind of see where that we're going with this, think of a town. If a town keeps getting more people traveling to it and living in it without making more access ways or roads, it's going to be hard for all of those people to get around and get to the places they want to go to. Uh, this is very similar to all of us driving to school every day at Howell. There's only Highway 94 and Highway D to get to Howell every day. So if you don't get there by 6.30, 6.40, you're probably waiting in a long line of traffic to make sure that you get to school on time. This is exactly what a cell goes through when it gets too big and the volume and everything inside of it continues to increase. There's just not enough time uh, to get those materials across to all the parts of the cell in a timely fashion. Therefore, the cell just cannot function the way that it should and it probably will not be able to survive. So the answer to our problem is division. Before a cell gets too big, it's going to divide. It will grow first, it will replicate its DNA, and then divide. And cells will divide for growth, they will divide for repairing purposes, or for reproduction. And there's two types of reproduction with actual individuals that you do need to be aware of. Asexual reproduction uh, results in identical offspring. This is usually seen with plants, and it can also be seen with bacteria or prokaryotes, which I'm going to show you an example of here in a second. Sexual reproduction happens with all other organisms and it results in non-identical offspring, such as ourselves. We don't look exactly like our parents, um, but bacteria, they always look like their parents. Most plants will look exactly like their parent plants, so on and so forth. Now, if we're talking about a prokaryote, the way it goes through cellular division uh, is a process known as binary fission. It's much simpler than the process that we go through because they're prokaryotes. So they are a single-celled organism and their DNA is just a single circular structure or circular, you know, area. And it will duplicate and split the membrane and form two new cells. Very simple. Now for us, Things aren't so simple because we are you are we're made up of eukaryotic cells that require some very careful tuning as we go through the process of cell division. Now the first thing you need to be aware of is that our chromosomes are what carry our genetic information or our DNA. So a lot of what happens during the process of cell division is going to be focused on those chromosomes. Now the main type of cell division we're going to talk about today is mitosis. And mitosis occurs in somatic cells. And those are all of our body cells, like our skin cells, our cheek cells, our muscle cells. Those are all cells that are parts of our body. Now, there's also another type of cell division known as meiosis. And that occurs with our reproductive cells, our sperm and our egg. 
for when we create a whole new individual. So I mentioned earlier that during sexual reproduction, we produce non-identical offspring. That is what results when we go through a process of meiosis. Mitosis, however, does result in identical cells. So we're going to focus on mitosis today, and we will touch on meiosis later, but I did want you to be aware that there are two tip different types of cell division. Uh, today's focus will be mitosis. Now, looking at those chromosomes, they're known as chromatin when there are these thread-like strings during interphase. And it's just a complex of chromosomes and proteins, which is broken down in this picture here from your textbook. If we take our DNA, and it will wind down around these histone proteins and form these nucleosome structures, which is just DNA wrapped around the histones, a bunch of those all coiled together and condensed will form a chromosome here. And notice that the chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids, meaning they carry the exact same genetic information, and they're held together by the centromere. So that brings us to the entire cell cycle. Now, the cell division is only a singular pro or a part of the process, and as you can see here by this little portion of the pie that we got, it's just a small part of the cell cycle. The rest of it is interphase, and interphase is made up of three parts. G1 phase, which is where cell growth occurs. The S phase, which is where DNA replication occurs. And then G2 phase, where the cell is going to prepare for mitosis. So as you can see, that does take up the longest piece of this pie chart here, and it is the longest phase of the cell cycle. Now, cell division includes cytokinesis, and mitosis, and it is also known as the M phase of the cell cycle. Mitosis is the division of the nucleus of the cell, which is the longer part of cell division, and then cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm or the cells themselves. And we are going to look at that a little bit closer right now. So, First, we start with interphase. Like I said, this is the first phase of the cell cycle. The cell is going to grow, it's going to replicate its DNA, and then it's going to prepare to divide, and then mitosis will take place. But as you can see here, we can only see little thread-like structures known as chromatin. We can't see the condensed chromosomes during interphase. And these centrioles are what are going to help move those uh, that genetic information where it needs to go within the cell during mitosis. So when you look at interphase underneath the microscope, you're not going to see much but like a little, but the cell and like a tiny dot showing us the nucleus. Now, we'll be able to see things a little bit better once we get to the phases of mitosis. And the first phase is prophase. It's the longest phase of mitosis, and the nuclear membrane is going to break down at this point. Um, the centrioles will show up, and the spindle fibers will be forming, which, if you remember, our spindle uh, fibers are made from those microfilaments we talked about in Chapter 7. Now, metaphase over here is where these chromosomes are going to line up in the middle of the cell, and they're going to be um, pulled with their centromeres in the center to that uh, cell, and the centromeres are going to attach there to help them relocate during the process of division. Then anaphase, I like to remember anaphase and think of the word apart because the chromosomes are going to be separated, those, those two sister chromatids are going to be separated and pulled apart to opposite sides of the cell. And then telophase finally occurs. The chromosomes will actually uh, start to spread and return to that chromatin form. Uh, a nuclear envelope will start reforming, and then we can move on to cytokinesis. Now, before I show you that, I want to give you a closer look at each phase. Again, here's prophase. Our nuclear membrane is breaking down. We have our chromosomes, our duplicated chromosomes that are attached with the centromere. And I don't want you to forget that those, each of those separate arms in that chromosome are known as a sister chromatid up until they are separated again during anaphase. Okay, and then metaphase, again, I like to think metaphase middle, all the chromosomes are lined up in the middle, and you can see the spindle fibers, which are made up of microfilaments, are attached to the centromeres and prepared to pull them to opposite sides of the cell during anaphase. 
and now the arms will be known as individual chromosomes again. And then finally, we have telophase, the last phase of mitosis, where the nuclear envelopes are reforming. You have our, our chromosomes on so, opposite sides of the cell, and they will start to kind of spread out and form those thread-like chromatin structure again. Which brings us to cytokinesis, the last phase of cell division. And I have an actual picture uh, through an electron microscope of an animal cell going through cytokinesis and you can see the membrane is being drawn inward to pinch those cells apart. Uh, this area here when it's starting to pinch is also known as the cleavage furrow. Now with a plant cell, this is shown underneath the light microscope and this is something we'll look at in class. It actually is a little different. It doesn't split into two separate cells. A cell plate will form down the middle, you know, so that we can get that cell wall and cell membrane formed again. And Plant cells stay together because that's what helps them form their rigid structure. So they won't actually separate like an animal cell will. All right, and that is it for today. Again, go back and repeat, pause, play as much as you need to. It wouldn't hurt to maybe draw a small sketch of each one of those phases. And I will see you next time.